Well, it's always a joy every time we bring you God's word, and I, I'm excited to know that it's going well with you. It might not be the best of times, but I'm fully persuaded that the faithfulness of God has sustained you, and you are not just managing, you are actually making progress in the present circumstance. Uh, I will be talking to you on changing times and seasons, or, or preparing for a new dawn and a new season, or, you know, changing planning, changing seasons. These are things we've, we've taught you before, uh, not knowing when you will apply it, but we want to remind you again of the things um, you know from scriptures. Listen, our world will never be the same again. And you need to come to the new, this new reality, this new expectation, and be able to change the way things are done. Let's begin from Luke chapter 5. Luke's gospel um, chapter 5. I read verses 33 to 39. And I trust God that this reading will bring you a blessing. So take your Bible wherever you are and join me as we open to Luke chapter 5. Don't just listen. Don't just watch. Participate as if you were physically present in church as usual. And they said to him, verse 33 of Luke chapter 5, I read from the New American Standard Bible. They said to him, the disciples of John often fast and offer prayers. The disciples of the Pharisees also do the same. But yours eat and drink. Jesus said to them, you cannot make the attendance of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them. Can you? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. And he was also telling them a parable. For one tears, no one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. Verse 37. And no one puts new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise, the new wine will bust the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wine skin and no one after drinking old wine wishes for new. For he says, the old is good enough. What a scripture. Let me begin from the last verse. No one, after drinking old wine, wishes for new, for he says the old is good enough. It's exciting. People call me and say, Pastor, when are we going to be able to see again? When are we meeting? When is fellowship going to hold? I say, fellowship is on. We may not have met physically, but we're still having fellowship with the Father. And when you connect with us online, sad enough, there are also people who have not been, who are not even aware of the online, who have been in the last two services, who participated in the rehearsals. But when they left that service, they forgot everything that was said. Now, people desire the old, and they say, hey, no one after drinking the old wine wishes for new, for he says the old is good. The way we have always lived our lives is, is good. It's, it's, it's. But understand that there is a new season, there is a new era coming upon us. We must understand that seasons and times change. And you know, in the, in the, Jesus was speaking, so, oh, Jerusalem, if you knew your time, I see this as your time, your opportunity. You remember Joseph in Egypt. Time came when there was such difficulty, such hardship. But that was when Joseph rose into global acclaim. He says that the world came to Joseph in Egypt. May this be your own time. Now, a few things you need to do. You cannot, if, if you think exactly, naturally, the regular way, that last verse of Luke chapter 5 describes your reaction he said, no one after drinking old wine wishes for new, for he says the old is new. But you know the story that, that we just ended 
about putting new wine in old wine skin. No, no, no. Verse 37 says, no one puts new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise, the new wine will bust the skin and it will spill out and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wine skin. So if you are going to start a new initiative, if you are going to come by new ideas, there's going to be renewal. You must also change your expectation. Now, it old Jewish tradition, how is wine skin renewed? You soak it in oil. When wine skin gets old, it becomes brittle. I remember that as a young man, I bought a camera, fantastic uh, camera of that time, fantastic leather covering that it had. Then I traveled to Jaws for a conference. And that trip ruined my camera. Got to Jaws and the leather Jaws woke up the next morning. There were cracks all over my black leather camera case. Because it wasn't made for that climate. How do they renew wine skin? They say you soak it in oil. If not, if it becomes too dry, it becomes brittle. Now, this lockdown period is time for you to refresh your mind, renew your thinking. I remember when the cell phones um, were launched. Or just before the, the launch, uh, and I bought a Siemens small phone, and I showed my dad that, well, this new, that he looked at the phone and said, it's not going to work, it's too small. Don't forget, my father was a newspaper man. They used to send their, their, their stories by radio. I've been in their radio room a few times. You, you press, it, it was the one-way radio they used to use. You don't talk, same time, both people cannot talk at once. You, you say to one person, blah, 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 and the governor visited the site, over. So they write on the other side, and then over, and then you continue. You speak, you hold on. So my father looked at the radio and said, it's not this phone, and said, it's not going to work. And then the launch happened. And then I was with him and my cousin in Abuja called a soldier and spoke with him. And he said, really, it's working. And then he said, ah, this thing is going to cost sickness. This small thing, after one month, two months, he said, they will take all your money. Then let's get you a phone. He said, no, 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 no. You see, he was already an old man then. And it was difficult to convince him to make that change. Now there's got to be if you are going to receive new wine, you've got to prepare the wine skin. In this situation, you are the wine skin. You need to come to the new reality. Business is not going to happen like it has always been. There are school, a school in the city of Uyo during this lockdown that is already running Zoom groups for their students. Zoom is the new software for holding um, video webinars, you know, you can sign up 100 on the free app or a few people. Or you can pay a little money and increase the number so everybody can see everybody and everybody can talk and participate and be part. But you can say, well, it doesn't work. Let's meet together. It's just like, you know, some people have not been able to make the change, the transition from the paper Bible to a digital one. And you know, sometimes such individuals have tended to make it look that anybody that uses the digital one, you have a device, you have this on the device that, well, uh, you are not being spiritual. <laughs> you know, just like many things we do in church for which we don't have scripture. You, it, they are laughable thoughts. And my goal today is to challenge you to upgrade, to understand that the world is moving on and you've got to move with it. If not, we're going to be leaving you behind. Some people don't even have an account. If the country was properly run and there was meaningful leadership, do you know that we don't need to send Gary around? We don't need, everybody could have had their accounts credited and people can get what they want because government is asking us to, to remain in isolation and government is asking us to come and collect Gary. Isn't that a contradiction? But all that is happening because, listen, we are not catching up. We are not growing with the reality of the time. And I want you to understand the world must not leave you behind. So, immerse yourself in that oil. 
don't become dry and brittle and then begin to expect that things will change. If you look at verse verse 36, no and and he was also telling them a parable. No one tears a piece of oak of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. Your dress is torn. You know, the, the, the tellers that stitch, they use thread to kind of create a new piece of cloth over that tear. I say, if you remove that place and put a new, a new piece of cloth, now you know the strength of that new piece is not the same as the old piece. And as you try to, you will tear it again. So the, follow a proper renewal process. A few things that they will ask you to do. Adjust your expectation. Recalibrate your mindset. You know, desire the new. Don't just say, well, we need to do fellowship the way. No, no, no. Desire the new. What's my new reality? We cannot continue to do things the way that it has always been. Let's see how this and that and this. What? How can I bring, see the new change that's happening? Desire. Desire, you know, when if your desire is, is meaningful, you will generally follow it up with new. And like now my friend, Brother George, preaching the other day, gave us another point. He said, go where the wind blows. Ezekiel 1 verse 12, he says, and each went straight forward. Wherever the spirit was about to go, they would go without turning as they went. Where is the spirit going? That's where I want you to go. Where is the Spirit leading you to in this new season? You've got to be sensitive. You've got to be sensitive and follow it. That even as these beings follow the Spirit in, in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 12, wherever the Spirit was, what's the Spirit saying about your business? What is it saying about the period post-coronavirus or post-COVID 2019? How are you expected to live your life now? What is the new thing? You, what's your new reality? Not what I say, but for you, what the spirit. Now, uh, the next thing they expect you to do is choose your company. Proverbs 13, 20. Say, he who walks with the wise will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Proverbs 13, verse 20. He who walks with the wise will, listen, walk with people who are thinking future. What's life going to be like, in, you know? Uh, don't go back to people who tell you that, ah, ATM, 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 How can you send money to your mother in the village if you don't have an online account? How can they, things you cannot do without an ATM card? You need to go beyond ATM. You need to have your bank app on your phone and sign in online and move. You don't need to have people come all the way to collect two, three thousand from you. In literally every village now in this state, there are people, thank God to the new um, central bank, that, that those small businesses that people can go to a POS and draw some little money and keep now. Sometimes you don't even send as much as you would have needed to go there. You save time. You say that transport money becomes the upkeep money that you even give to that person. So you have no excuse to continue to live in the past. No excuse. Post COVID 19, I'm looking at we in Nigeria upgrading to, you know, you go to some market in Ghana, many people have POS. And you wonder, now I mean, I don't mean shops, market. You wonder why we in Nigeria will consistently be behind. So friends, don't live at the level of the people around you. Listen to what God is saying. And look at the way of the future and go with it. And I can expect, I can trust, I will believe that God will bring that change. into. Look at another story in Luke 16. Luke 16 I read verses 3 and 4. Let me read from the New King James Version. It says, Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? Now, that's the question. I would like you to, What shall I do? After this lockdown, What shall I do? Now, I, on the radio show, many people keep calling uh, and they say, Ah, what would, um, what would, uh, what would people do? What would people say? 
But the question, what is government doing for me? Why would they not send me food? Now, but listen to what scripture says. That man was asking himself the question, what would I do? Post-COVID-19, what will I do? What will I do? Now, listen to the next. For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. It is time to think. What will I do? If you no longer have capital, if things have changed, it is time for you to also change the things you are doing. That man was going to be sacked, not for stealing, but for wasting his master's resources. And he decided to begin to evaluate himself. What can I do? He says, I cannot beg. And you know, there are people who are professional beggars. And I have always spoken with many of them. Is it not you? I saw the other time. I said, no, no, you can't make a living out of begging. And sad enough, many, many people, pastors, we've made begging our lifestyle. Policemen, you 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 see somebody. The first thing is not to do your work; is to uh, is to ask, "What do you have?" No, this man was a man of honor, and he said to himself, "Listen, listen to what he said to himself." Then the steward said, "Within himself, what shall I do? For the master is taking the stewardship away from me." I cannot dig. I know what I can do. I know what I cannot do. He knew that he could not dig. I am ashamed to beg. I pray that you will become ashamed to beg. You can do something. You cannot afford not to do something. Your kids have no no food to eat. You have a car. Instead of using it to carry passenger and taking it, load people to Calabar and come back, you are acting like a big man. You're saying, "Ah, no, no, no. I cannot do that because you are not thinking. You've got to do something. And I'm ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do. My prayer for you is that before the lockdown is called off, you would have resolved what to do. You can't go back to the way you have always lived your life. You would have resolved what to do. And he did. And that is, it is the, it's, you know, Friends, this man began to talk to his clients. He looked at his records. You know that many of us don't even have data of any kind privately. You cannot tell what your need is every month. You cannot even tell what your income is. But this man had a record. He knew who was owing and he knew how to reach them. He had their phone numbers. I know a few workmen who do not even have the number of their clients, phone numbers of their clients. Now you are most unserious. I have had a few calls of people send me um, 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 needs, requests, and say, Pastor, send us, send us money. We are, uh, there's no food in this house. Send no food. The next day, and I asked the office, they said they were rich the previous month. So I thought, well, there's no need responding to that. The next day they sent. So I replied, I said, didn't you get the money sent to you recently? And I said, oh, we don't get alerts on that account. <laughs> Does that, <laughs> is that my problem? You cannot have your account where you have money coming into you in this season. And you claim you don't have an alert. That's an unserious way to live. How will you know when they send you money? And for all such people over time, we've said, all it takes is a walk to your bank. That could have been done a year ago. And they have not done it. And you wonder when, how your life will change. Oh, God will come from heaven and go to the bank. And so they got money in the bank for about a month and they are not aware. And of course, all such individuals do not even know how to check their bank balance from their phone. And you are blaming people. My prayer is that you will upgrade and come to a new level of life. You come to where, you, you listen, what shall I do? You want to begin to, somebody sent you money now, 
It comes, except there's the network problem. You, you are aware that there's some money and you can move it to the next person. You can meet the needs where they are. Listen, we need to change one Sunday morning. If two, three years ago, we in church and one of the missionaries, somewhere in some remote riverine environment far from here, kept calling, kept calling, and then sent text, oh, my baby is ill, oh, <laughs> you know. And I spoke with him later. What is the matter? Cannot tell. Have you gone to hospital? We don't have money. How much is the hospital card? I do not know. So what do you need? I need money. How much do you need? I cannot tell. So I said, okay, um, what, where, where, how can we send you the money? Send us the account number. I said, I can't find, I don't know where my ATM card is. That sounds like people who have no plan for their lives. I, as an individual, have decided that they will not take me back. So if you're living your life planlessly without a program, now you will not be, so do I have, say in this lockdown, such an individual has a need. What do I need? I will leave my house and, and look for police trouble by driving to go collect cash and give to them. No, not me. Everybody's got to make a plan for their life. And recently, somebody said, okay, I have a neighbor. Send the money to, to my neighbor. No, not me. No, not me. Because if you send money to too many people, you can, listen, organize your life. Organize your life and get things done that you need. What shall I do? That's the question I want, to, I want you to think about this whole week. Number one. <laughs> I cannot dig. I'm not a physically strong person. I am ashamed to beg. And I don't think I should beg. By the way, I've always believed that the best way to make money is to offer professional service. That way you get money with dignity. Whatever you do, you are a cameraman, you take your camera, you record events, and you tell them their charge and they pay you. They're not doing you a favor, you are doing them a service and they pay you for that service. But sad, some Christians just think that money will come to them for doing nothing. Haven't you read that whatever a man does shall prosper? So what if you're not doing anything? You give God nothing to bless. God nothing to prosper. So I want you to think, what do I do? What, how do I bring change to what I do in that situation? I want to encourage you today. I want you to understand that our world can, will not go back to the way it has always been. You rather should have a plan to change with this changing season. What shall I do? What shall I do? Post lockdown. How do I run my family? How do I run my business? How do we connect with people now? What are the things we need to do? I'm going to pray for you. Or with you. That God should bring you new ideas. Great ideas. And I'd like you to join us on Friday. As we continue. You know to look at this series. This week. Before this lockdown is called. I want you to speak like that man. I have resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, for you it shall not be, he said, when I'm put out of this lockdown, people will be able to deal with me. I may not have a physical shop. Whatever it is that God, is, you are ready to go the way the Spirit is leading. And hear me, child of God, the Spirit may not be leading another person that way. To receive from God your own peculiar reading, leading, and do what God has in mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking help for your people. Lord, we ask that you unstop our ears that we will hear from you. Let us hear your voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Grant us the boldness and the courage to take that step that you are putting, laying on our heart. It may never have been done before. People may be laughing at us that it looks foolish. But Lord, Every great endeavor in this world I've always started with a word from you. 
stir of faith in our lives. Lord, are there people who have joined us who have never given their life to Christ? We are asking that as they ask for forgiveness for their sins, may their sins be forgiven. May their names be written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, when you come to receive your people at the end of time, may they also be part of the crowd on that beautiful morning. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being part of the service today. Again, make sure you are part of the local church in your neighborhood. You probably have been a local house church with nobody connecting with you. Read the leaderships of the network and let, we will let you know who around you needs help and who can bring you help when you need. Send in your reports and let us all be our brother's keeper. God bless you. See you on Friday, same time through the same medium.